Okay, so Be'ezras Hashem, tonight we're going to be continuing our series of Shirim on the Torah of the Goin and the Tzaddik, Rav Yitzhak Maya Morgenstern Shlita, entering the Sea of Wisdom. And tonight, I believe, is going to be our 41st uh, week of doing this. So Be'ezras Hashem, you know, we should be zoichet to share the Tzaddik's Torah for, for many, 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 many years. Um, this week was, again, I mean, the, the contrast they put out this week was... Uh, a little bit smaller in general, it was around 80 pages, but they had a lot of the Torahs that were given over by Hadlakas Neros when the Rebbe was in Uman and in Mezhabuz, and just Devarim Neflaim, and really, really Kadai for, for everybody to look at. In addition, they added, you know, some of the Rebbe's Hagaos and understanding of Rabbi Kiva Eger on the beginning of Bava Metzia, and on Yerushalmi Gittin, and on Tainis, just a... Uh, just an incredible, incredible amount of chidushe Torah. I showed somebody just what the Rebbe was doing in Masechus Tainis over, over Shabbos, and they looked at it for a minute, and they kind of turned back to me. They said, this has never been done before. Nobody has ever done such a thing before. I said, Rabbi Nastin did it with the Shulchan Aruch, but no, nobody's done this with Shas. So so it's a, it's pretty clear to anybody who's looking that uh, what the Rebbe is doing is is quite simply unprecedented on nearly every level of Torah, is, is my bias. Um, but today we're not even going to be learning a teaching from the tzaddik. We're going to be learning a story that the tzaddik told over. And uh, I was just so moved by this story. And I found this story to be so emblemic of so much of what I think the tzaddik's Torah is coming to teach us. That we're going to look at this story, which was recorded in one of the Yuma de Hilula teachings. So there was the art side of Rabbi Nasa, and there was the art side of the tzaddik from Renana. And there was also the art side of the Divrei Yecheskel, of Shinov, uh, the Baal Divrei Yecheskel, the, the son, one of the sons of the Divrei Chaim of Tzans. Now the Divrei Yecheskel, as it's known, was uh, the, one of the Baalei HaZohar in, in terms of the students of the Baal Shem Tov and the continuity of the Baal Shem Tov, somebody who understood uh, the deep necessity for engaging the depths of Panimiya Satora as well as Halacha, meaning the Div, the the Divrei Yecheskel was medactic on Halacha, almost La Haflia, to the point that the Shalos and Shuvos that come out and are printed in the back of the new Dever Yecheskel between him and Goine Oilam and the Balelita, they were all kind of engaged with the Dever Yecheskel because of the Dikduke Halacha and the hyper-focus that he had on, on Halacha, as well as just famously just a, a, a deep insight into, into the Sugios of Tachanun, the Divrei Cheskel said over that the Zidichavar and the Kamar Tzadikim, that there were certain times that they wouldn't say Tachanun on Erev Shabbos because they didn't want to be matriach their kehilas with burying somebody on Shabbos. Because these Tzadikim who understood the secret of Nefila Sapayim and the Tzadik's descent into a place of separation after the Yichud of Shemona Esrei, they understood the deep light of Nefila Sapayim, which the Mitla Rebbe describes very powerfully as a light of Kesser that exceeds and overwhelms even the light that a person is capable of experiencing in, um, in, in Chachma or in Bina. And so this Maisa from the Divrei Yecheskel with a certain explanation from Rav Halpern. Halpern. Rav Halpern Halpern was the, uh, the Tzaddik of Golders Green who, who started the base Medrash where the Rebbe's father davened and where the Rebbe davened. The Rebbe was machshev him as one of his Rebbeim, Rav Halpern Halpern. Rav Halpern Halpern was also very much makusher to Rav Yankala Peshvarsker. He was actually the one who anointed Rav Yankala Peshvarsker as the... Uh, as the Mam Shech Derech, and these were the Tzadikim of the Rebbe. Rav Yankala Peshvorsker was one of the Tzadikim that the Rebbe attributes as being one of the one of the essential pipelines through which he received Drachim and Avedis Hashem. So we'll look at the Maisa, and then we're going to see a little bit about this this Maisa and what it can tell us about the, uh, the Tzadik's Torah. So Siper Morenu, the Rebbe told over, Shashama Mirabo, that he heard from his Rebbe, the Av based in the Tequilas Kaidish Golders Green Blondin, Habira, right? He heard from his Rebbe, the Goyen Rav Elchanan Halpern. And he heard of Maisa, that there was a child, there was a, a young boy, a young, a, a young adult, rather. That there was a, somebody before the age of his bar mitzvah who came to the Divrei Yecheskel of Shinov. Child, this this young person was a, an Am Ha'aretz Agaso Bepiv. And he was worried, he came to the Divrei Yecheskel with an anxiety. What was his anxiety? He stood before his wedding day. So what do you have to worry about? You're standing in front of your chasana. What are you worried? 
And he said, I don't know how to read the words of Birchas Torah. I don't know how to read the words of the Bracha for the Haftorah. And so what am I going to do at my Afra? The Divrei Yecheskel asked him, where are you from? And this Bachar told the Divrei Yecheskel the name of his town. There's going to be Yeshua. Shabbos of the Afra comes along and the Maran Hadivri Cheskel comes to sojourn for Shabbos in that town. And not only does he come to that town, not only did he come to the town, but the Divri Cheskel requested to Davin at this, you know, small Amaratzistic Ashul where this where this Chassan was going to have his Afra. And it was when this Bachar, when this Chassan went up to the Torah to read the Brachos for Birchas Torah and Birchas Torah, at that moment specifically, the Divrei Yecheskel entered into a state of his Pashtus Agashmias, of Dveikas to Akadosh Baruch Hu, entered into a state of Yichud. And it was the Mahalach of the Devar Yecheskel, like certain Sadiqim who were Meurer and Hispalus, externally Hispalus in their Yichud, that when the Devar Yecheskel entered into a state of his Kashrus, Takadish Baruch, he started making noises and he started moaning and groaning and sighing to the point that he was screaming, Hey, Liga Bashefer, Hey, Liga Bashefer, Hakadish Baruch, Hakadish Baruch, Kimin Hakad Sadiqim, like certain Sadiqim do. And the noise that the Divrei Cheska was making in the midst of his Yehudim in this small broke down shul of Amaratzim was loud enough to prevent the rest of the Kahila from hearing the noise or the mistaken words that this Chassan was saying when he made the Bircha, Bircha Sahaftar and Bircha Satora. Commenting on this story, Rav Achan and Halper and Schusi Yaganalina would say, "Vihine Afal Pishi Adu Al Godal Haf Kadas Soishal Maran Hadivrei Cheskal Kol Kutsa Shayud B'Dinei Ashal Chanorach." And even though we know we're dealing with a tzaddik who is moisr nefesh on every kutsa shal yud on every element of minhag and halacha within the Shul Chanorach, Ubevade Delav Milsa Zutri He Be'Enav Loy Lishmoya Birchas Haftarim Maftir, and it was certainly not a simple thing for him not to hear the bracha of Haftarah and the bracha of Maftir. And there was even a halachic shaila as to whether the entire kahila was capable of being yoyt to the haftaira. And the end of the day, it was all worth it in his eyes to save this bachar from chas v'shalom being embarrassed. So we have here is just a profoundly powerful story telling us about the kayach v'tzadik to not only listen compassionately to the pain of someone who expresses as a result of their amaratzas that they can't say the Torah, but the tzaddik comes and he brings his yichudim down, he brings his unity with God down into that lowly place of not being able to understand the words, all for the sake of what? To save this individual Jew from embarrassment. The Rebbe was talking about this on Hanukkah as well, and it's brought down in the Torahs on Hanukkah. But there are klal, the tzaddik and their avoida is miyachid yichudim, lives in a world of atzilus. They live in a world of yichud. And with separation, they don't deal very much with separation. There are certain tzaddikim who never go down to a world of separation. Tzaddikim who do not have the strength or the capacity to tolerate the distortion of the worlds of separation. Those were the tzaddikim who stayed in the world of Shemona Esrei, who stood in the world of atzilus. But we know from the Rebbe's writings that yes, it's a chiddush, it's a darga gavoya to be a tzaddik on the darg of chachma, but an even higher darga, like Rabbi Nachman teaches us, and like the Kamarna teaches us in the name of his uncle, the Zidichavar, that the ikr is to be lamalu lamata bavasachas, that the essential truth of a tzaddik is to be above and below at once, that the true sign of a tzaddik is to be achuz in the midah of keser, which is corresponding to the world of Adam Kadmoin, different than the world of Atzilus. The world of Atzilus, as we've said so often, does not go down into the worlds of Bria and Yisira and Yitzia. It can't tolerate that distortion. 
the bittel, the ayin of Chachma can't tolerate the concealment and the selfhood associated with Bina and the worlds of separation. But the Daga of Adam Kadma and the Daga of Keser is Mavrich min Aketza la Ketza, that it's Mislavish itself even in the worlds of Bri, Syria and Asiya. That the Daga of the Tzaddik on the Daga of Keser is capable of being above in a state of yichud, screaming, hey, look and also down below for the simple purpose of, of making another Jewish person feel good, of ensuring that a Jewish person is not embarrassed. And this avoid of the tzaddik and their ability to descend from the world of atzilus into the world of lowly experiences of, of atzlus and atzlus and all of the midos that we find ourselves in, schlepping around in the worlds of separation, the tzaddikim, the Balshem tov, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, all of our true tzaddikim, the Ariza, Rabbi Nachman, the tzaddikim hador, they come down to us. They bend themselves down and they bring that or lamat me'asar t'vachim to be magala, that even down here in the shul of Amaratus, where we are all this chassan, at least I'm this chassan, right? Who can't say the words of bir chassator, who can't say the words of the bracha of maftir. But what the tzaddik does is not only does he come down and bring his yichud down, but he utilizes his yichud for the specific purpose of making sure that another Jewish person is not bothered. Now this Torah, this idea of a tzaddik who's capable of descending down in order to do something so theoretically low while in truth revealing the deepest level of the tzaddik is the or, I believe, of the Torah of Rav Shemayar. It's also the or of the Torah of Rabbi Nachman. There's a maisa, one of my favorite maisalach from the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh is as follows, that the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh was traveling, and this was before the revelation, before the Baal Shem Tov revealed himself as a, as a mystic and a tzaddik Yisrael Olam. He was a hidden medicine man, like all of the tzaddik Hador before him, like the tradition of the Balei Shem. The Chiddush of the Baal Shem Tov was that he decided it was time to reveal himself. And the Baal Shem Tov and his Tamidim came to the home of a very sick and elderly woman. And this elderly woman said, you're a medicine man, you're a healer. Tell me that I'm going to feel better. And the Baal Shem Tov Davin, he said, you should feel better. And the woman said, no, 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 I didn't ask that I should feel better. I want to promise that I'm going to feel better. And the Baal Shem Tov says, I swear to you, I promise to you on my Olam Haba that you're going to have a refua. About a week later, the Talmidim heard that this woman passed away. And they came to the Rebbe and they came to the Baal Shem Tov and they said, you know, this is not such good PR. Right? We're about to reveal ourselves. You know, what, what happened here? He promised this woman that she was going to live. And here she is, that she passed away. What the Baal Shem Tov's response was, he says, do you think that my Olam Haba means anything to me in the face of giving a Jewish woman one ounce of comfort? If she had an ounce of comfort from the fact that I said she was going to live, then it was worth any punishment that I would get for such a thing. And it goes to show us that the light of the tzaddikim is a willingness to help another Jewish person, no matter what, to go down into a space of Amaratzas, to even, God forbid, miss the bracha of Haftarah, to miss the bracha of maftir because the tzaddikim understand that the ikan kuda is to help another Jewish person feel good about themselves, to be mala those Jews, to be madlik those uh, pesalim and those shmanim that are not typically lit, but with the tzaddik bending down and sharing the Torah down here with us and a kaddish baruch Hu being mashpia, that or of the light of the tzaddikim down to us, where all the chassan and all the tzaddikim are the divrei yechesku who are coming down and screaming, hey, Liga Bashefer, hey, Liga Bashefer, just so that we don't get embarrassed. And I think that this Nakuda, this story moved me very deeply. And I think it's also very much Makusher to the light of the Torah of the Tzaddik, who teaches us more than anything that the Taklis is not to stay in the world of Atsilus, but rather the Taklis is to go down from Atsilus into the worlds of Briya, Yitzhira, and Asiya, to go down from unity into disunity, so that you can force the disunity to reveal that it too, in fact, is revelatory of unity, thereby expanding and enlarging and intensifying and beautifying and adorning the perfection that existed beforehand. Because it's one thing for a tzaddik to operate in atzilus and not pay attention to the amaratzim who can't uh, say a pasuk, who can't learn Torah, who can't do a mitzvah, who can't hold themselves back, who can't stop themselves, who can't do what is needed in Avodah Hashem. It's another thing for the tzaddik to come down and to meet that person right there and to go into a state of deveka specifically in that world of amaratzas, even if it means a, a bitl on the kutza shal yud of halacha, all for the sake of allowing another Jewish person to feel good. And that's the giloy that the tzaddikim give us, the Torah of the tzaddikim give us, is that we all sit at a table together, right? That's the Chiddush of the Baal Shem Tov, that it's no longer one person sitting on top of the bima, talking down to everybody else, but the tzaddik is yoyred down from their makam gavoa, and they come down and they talk to the am, they talk to the people, and in that way, the am itself uncovers the light of the tzaddik that lives within them as well, to the point that, lasadavu, we can say, amich kulam tzaddikim.
that the entire people are tzaddikim. Because the taqlis of the tzaddik, as the Rebbe points out in this week also, is, is a shadchan, right? The tzaddik is a shadchan. Tzaddik is a shadchan who serves as the in-between, as the, the, the matchmaker between Nishma Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it's not chas v'shalom that the tzaddik has any interrelationship between the relationship of each Jew and the relationship of a Kaddish Baruch Hu ki'ilu, that a person can't be makusher to a Kaddish Baruch Hu, but only to the tzaddik chas v'shalom. When it comes to being medaktik on the halachos of what it means to be makusher to a tzaddik, Baruch Hashem, we have the Rebbe's Maimur, or Zaruel et Tzadikim, which is translated into English already, and there are Bresel or Mashbiyim who say that this is kind of the most important Maimur to learn in clarifying these ideas. But Kuliamalo Pligi, the Tzadik is a Shadchin, the Tzadik is coming to reveal the Nakuda of Tzadik in us, so that we could be Makushar to the Nakuda of Tzadik by Akadosh Baruch Hu, which is the Tzadik El Shal Olam. And so Bezra Sashem, when we when we realize that the Tzadikim and Akadish Baruch Hu is coming down to us in our state of embarrassment and making all of the noise of Yichud and Hashba and Heilig Abashefer, all so that we're not embarrassed, so then we can take a little comfort in the Rachmanus that the Tzadikim have on us. And, and that Rachmanus is the, the Torah of the Tzadik as well. A Talmud asked the Rebbe in, in, uh, in Uman, I think, or in Mezhebu, she said, you know, there are certain Tzadikim that are Poyal Yeshuos, who bring about Nisim Vineflos, and a matakin and yanim and parnasa and health. And then there's certain tzaddikim who draw down chidushe Torah. And so what happens when your tzaddik is a tzaddik who's only drawing down chidushe Torah and is not the one drawing down the pu'ulos and the yeshuos? So are you supposed to go to another tzaddik for the pu'ulos and the yeshuos and stick by the Torah of the other tzaddik? And the Rebbe's answer was that no, 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 no. Those tzaddikim who only draw down chidushe Torah, those are also the pu'ulos and those yeshuos. They just happen in a different way. The nisim and the refua and all of the hamtaka and all of the fixing comes to us through the Torah of the tzaddikim. Not being makusher to the guf of the tzaddik, which is also an Indian, but to be makusher to the Torah of the tzaddik from afar. And the Rebbe always says, and I've heard it numerous times, that a person wants to be makusher to the tzaddik in chutzlaretz or any time is to learn the Torah of the tzaddik. On Shabbos to learn the gilionos of the tzaddik's Torah during the week to learn the ma'amarim. And as Mamela, when you learn the Rebbe's Torah, you're also learning every other tzaddik's Torah because the Rebbe is a shita mekubetzes. And so in that way, we enter a little bit more into the, the sea of wisdom with the preparation to realize that ultimately it's just racham and rabbim. The Torah of the tzaddikim is coming to give us comfort in our places of not knowing. So Be'ezrus Hashem, we'll continue learning together and we'll continue you know, finding comfort in the light of the tzaddikim.